At first, I thought I was going to make the electronics all by hand, and in theory, this was doable. With 83 pre-orders, there's 83 of these control boards to make, and 498 other simpler boards for the LEDs and touch buttons. In theory, I could assemble them manually in something like four weeks, but the tweezer work is just hell on my knuckles. So I invested in an entry-level pick-and-place machine, the Chamhai 36VA. I absolutely love this machine. It was a rocky start with the included software, but the build quality is great, and now I can do 40 of these control boards in a day. Previously, the most I'd managed was four, and then my hands were wrecked. There are no words for how satisfying it is to me watching this thing assemble boards. It has just two nozzles, which means changing nozzles for different size parts. I did have to modify the nozzle head assembly to handle the 4.5mm connector parts. It does have 5mm of clearance over the boards, but the retraction height of the nozzles on the stock machine is much less than that, which meant you could place one 4.5mm part, but the others would collide with it as they were carried over the board. I increased the nozzle retract height 1.5mm by altering the nozzle bracket mounts. I've linked the diagram in the description below. A few components do still have to be placed by hand. These caps and jacks are over 5mm. Then, after board assembly and inspection, it's into the high-tech solder reflow oven. This is a 30-pound halogen oven, with the metal lamp diffuser removed, and lined with foil. There's hundreds, maybe thousands of YouTube videos on reflow ovens, reviewing affordable Chinese machines or customized uh, DIY toaster ovens, all with microcontrollers managing heat ramp profiles. But frankly, given that solder reflow is so critical and that it only takes three minutes, I prefer to watch it happen. Automated reflow makes sense in volume, but at this scale, Dialing it in takes longer than just watching it, and in my opinion, the affordable options will never be as good as a pair of eyes. Finally, it's time to load the firmware onto the ESP8266 controllers, and after that, test the board's work. <laughs> 